Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Well, um, we uh, were considering similarity in three-dimensional space in the previous lecture, so I would like to spend some time um, solving um, a couple of problems. Problems are really very simple, we will crack them in no time. And uh, as always, let me remind you that this lecture is part of the course of Advanced Mathematics presented on Unizor.com. And uh, that's the website I suggest you to uh, watch this lecture from. Okay, so the problems. First problem, prove that all cubes are similar to each other. Okay, so if you have a small cube and you have a larger cube, they are similar. All cubes are similar to each other. How can it be proven? Well, let's just think about what is similarity. By definition, uh, two objects are called similar if there is some kind of a scaling which converts one into another which is uh, either another or maybe some other which is congruent to that another. So if this is A and this is B, so I have to find such a, a scaling which is defined by center and the factor that A is converted, is transformed to A prime which is congruent to B. This is A and this is B. That's what basically our similarity uh, is, uh, is defined how. Um, so, fine, to, 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 to prove the similarity we have to find uh, the point, uh, the center and uh, the factor of um, this scaling. Now, um, the point is any and the factor is, if this is A and this is B, then the factor is B over A. Now what happens if I use this factor and any center of scaling, let's say here, x. Well, each point of this cube should be somehow extended if I will be able to, to draw it properly, which obviously this is not a proper, my artistic talents are not really that great, something like this. So this is this side, this is this side, something like this, that's this one. So anyway, we are building this cube it will be something like this. So this would be transformed into this. Now, if this is A, this would be F times A. But since F is equal to B over A, this is B. So now we have this cube, which has a side B, and every side is B, obviously and this cube, and these are obviously congruent to each other. Um, the congruence is usually the ability to transform one into another. So if you have two cubes of the same um, length of the, of the edge, how can they transform one into another? Well, actually, it's very simple. Uh, first, you pick a particular vertex in one and move it to this one. Then you align the plane where it belongs to, like a base of this cube, for instance. If it's a little bit tilted, you have to position it. Then the whole base uh, can be aligned by uh, rotating uh, within that plane around this point. And when the base is aligned, everything else will be aligned as well. <coughs> okay, so that's the simple thing. And the most important is the factor, not the center, because I could use any center and uh, 
with another center of scaling, I will produce another cube with the size of the edge B. And all of these cubes are um, uh, congruent to the one which we need, right? So it's not dependent on the center, it depends only on the factor. The factor should be chosen correctly, and the factor is in this case ratio between the edges, the, the lengths of the edges. Okay, next, very, very similar. You have uh, to prove that two tet uh, tetrahedrons are um, similar to each other. Now, tetrahedrons, um, I, I, I'm talking about the, the regular tetrahedron, which is um, something like this, where all sides are the same. So every side, and there are four of them, one as a base and three as side, um, uh, side faces of this pyramid, every one of them is equilateral triangle. That's what regular tetrahedron is. And now we can take another one, which is maybe positioned somehow differently, with all edges equal to B. Exactly the same thing. Choose factor equal to ratio of the lengths of the edges. Take any center of scaling and basically scale this tetrahedron tetrahedron into a, the one which will have uh, A times F which is equal to B uh, lengths of each edge and once you have two regular tetrahedrons of the, with, with the same size of the edge they can be um, transformed one on the top of another uh, so that means they are congruent and again the process is very simple first we align the vertex then we adjust the, the base the, the the base plane then we rotate within the base plane to to have these triangles coincide and that would be the end of it next is again very similar so I, I, I wanted actually to show different shapes which are um, congruent to each other um, so the third one is the sphere. So if you have a small sphere and a big sphere, they are always similar to each other. Now again, the way how to do it, how to prove the similarity, if this radius is capital R and this radius is lowercase r, we just have a ratio equals the ratio between the radiuses, you can use center here, although you can use actually any center, but it's easier if I will have it <coughs> here. And um, using the uh, scaling with this factor, I will um, change, I will transform every point which is on the radius lowercase r, uh, r into something which is F times lowercase r, which is r, capital R, and that would be a sphere like this. And these are two spheres of the same radius, even if it doesn't look like, <laughs> uh, like that on my drawing, but they are the same radius, and obviously two uh, spheres of the same radius are congruent, because all you need to do is just to move one center into another, and everything else will, will be in place. So these are three very, very simple things where I have proven that um, certain um, very regular figures with the same number of edges or, or the same shape. So we have either cubes where all edges are the same and all angles are the same. We have regular uh, tetrahedrons uh, which, are, which have all faces um, 
equilater uh, equilateral equilateral triangles and uh, and spheres which basically is determined by the radius so these are all um, groups of figures which are similar within each group okay now let's use something else. Let's talk about volume of uh, similar uh, figures. Here is the problem. Um, well, let me first give you its kind of a home style um, description and then I will abstract it into more mathematical language. So the home style is if you have a, let's say, an empty glass and you fill it with, let's say, balls of certain diameter. Now, there is certain amount of space within that glass taken by these balls, and there is certain amount of space which is free. So you can pour some water, and it will be certain amount of water in that glass. Now, what if you will replace these balls within this, uh, within this glass? These are all balls. With the balls of smaller diameter and then again pour some water will it be more water in the glass with smaller um, uh, uh, smaller balls actually yeah smaller balls or 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 more or less so wh what's the answer to this question um, what's the more um, um, what what kind of scenario leaves more free space let's say for the water if you fill it up with uh, big balls or small balls now let me transfer uh, tra transfer this particular um, problem into mathematical language um, I would say the following now consider you have let's say a cube and this cube is filled well not filled but we will inscribe into this cube a sphere which will touch every something like this it's inscribed into each Uh, into each face of this cube. So basically the diameter of the cube, uh, sorry, the diameter of the sphere is equal to the edge of the cube, all right? So again, we have certain amount taken by this sphere and certain amount around it which is free. Now instead of this sphere we will take the one which has, um, let's say, one nth of its diameter. And we will take many spheres of this diameter. And we will fill it up the same way. Now, for instance, n is equal to 2 then that means that I will have two uh, balls across each edge and four balls, it's something like this and then four balls on the next level something like this, so it will be eight balls, right? two balls across each, uh, each side well, they're supposed to touch each other, of course. So, now the question is, we have taken certain amount of space by these balls, and certain amount of space is left free, and what's, 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 what's greater, amount of free space here or there, or any other n? What happens in this case? Well, let's just think about this. If this is your diameter of the ball you have n balls which can fit uh, along this edge right if before you had this diameter which means edge is equal to diameter 
Now the diameter is one nth of that. So you will have n balls here and n balls here. So on each layer you will have n square balls, right? How many layers do you have? Well, again, n, because it's n here, n here, and n, and n here, right? So you have n times n times n. So you have n cube different balls. So you have n cube balls. Okay, that's fine. Now, what about the volume of each ball? Well, if the size is one nth, remember that the volume is um, proportional when we are talking about similar uh, objects. The volume is proportional to the third power of the scaling factor. So what's the scaling factor from here to here? Well, obviously n, right? I said this is one nth of this radius, so I have to multiply it by I have to multiply the radius or diameter of this by n to get this one. So my scaling factor spheres are always similar to each other. So there is a scaling between this and this. Scaling factor is f equals to one n. Now the volume factor the um, the volume would be equal to uh, uh, the volume of the result of the scaling. That's why V2, V2 is equal to factor to the third degree times the original volume. So, original volume with this diameter is obviously 1 to the n cube of this volume, right? Since the factor is n. But the number of our uh, balls is n cube. So each one is 1 n to the third uh, power of, of the volume of this one, but there are n to the third power of these balls, of these spheres. So as a result, if you multiply these two, we will have exactly the same volume of the original sphere. So no matter how many smaller and smaller balls you fit into, you accurately fit. I mean, you don't have to leave the gaps or whatever else. I'm presuming that we are doing it geometrically correctly, layer by layer by layer, n square by n square by n square. So if you do this, then the volume which is occupied by these n to the uh, power of 3 n cube uh, of smaller balls is exactly the same as one big ball. Which means that the free space will also be the same. So no matter big balls you put into this glass or, or small balls, whatever the amount is left for the water will be the same. But provided this done accurately, etc. Alright, so that was the problem with filling up certain uh, reservoir with smaller or bigger objects. Now let me tell you this, if you will m make this problem even more uh, realistic, let's say you have uh, some kind of a box, let's say, you can fill it up with big stones and you can fill it up with, let's say, sand. Now there is a, some kind of a notion, notion that sand actually fills it up better than stones. But that's not true. I mean, yes, with certain um, uh, amount of abstraction we can prove that um, stones are irregular, obviously, and it, it can be, in practical life, it cannot be ideal. But if you do it like with uh, balls, with spheres, and accurately put it in, then the amount it will be the amount of free space will be exactly the same. So, you know. But that was something which you know you might ask a child: what exactly is the difference in the amount of free water? All right. Um, problem number five. Okay, it it also can 
can have a practical kind of a implementation. Uh, let's say you're in a bar and you're drinking a martini. And this is martini glass. Now, you, you are with a partner and she is drinking from the same martini glass, but she is asking the barman to fill it up only half height. So that's what she has. And you have full glass of martini. Well, question is, how much less she will drink? Well, let's think about it. This cone from, the, from this half down is obviously similar to this one. And uh, to prove the similarity is very easy. You just have this as a center and two as the factor. And this cone will grow into this one, right? Because every line on every uh, every line on this circle will will take the corresponding place on this on this circle. So the factor is, is two. Now the volume, as we know, has the factor of f to the third degree, right? So if this volume is v, and the factor is two from here to here, or reverse factor is one half, if you wish, then the volume of this is one half to the power of three, which is one eighth. So, I mean, it sounds like, well, fill up only half, that it's like half, but no, it's not half, it's really one eighth of, an, uh, of, of martini, which you will take. So that's, that's what's important. You are significantly reducing the amount if this is a cone. Now, if it's not a cone, if it's a glass like this, arithmetic is not working because this is a cylinder and half of this although a cylinder as well but these two cylinders are not uh, similar to each other the cones half of a cone is because there is no if, if you take a center for instance I don't know where here for instance and you will uh, well stretch it by, by what factor? Like 2, for instance? Well, then this cylinder will be converted into the cylinder of twice as high, which is something like this, and twice um, as big a circle. Not like this. So it will be fat cylinder, right? If you will take this bottom half and use the factor of 2 in scaling, you will have from here this, not this cylinder. So in this case, half a cone is similar to the full cone, but half of a cylinder is not. That's a big difference. All right, and the last one, which is kind of related to this counterexample with the cylinder which I just made. Question is, if you have two right rectangular prisms, under what circumstances? These are similar to each other. Well, let's just think about it. Right rectangular prism is basically defined by three parameters. Two parameters define the rectangle at the base, and the third parameter defines the height. And they're all different, obviously. Now, in this case, you have different lengths. Now, if we want to scale this into this, and the length of each segment is multiplied by the same factor of scaling, f, then c prime is equal to c times f, b prime is equal to b times f, and a prime should be equal to a times f. Only in this case we can have this particular uh, similarity. 
or if you wish forget about f but this can be expressed differently a over a prime is equal to b over b prime is equal to c over c prime if this is the case then we can choose factor f equals to this and then every um, uh, center of scaling will do as long as we will use this particular factor of scaling to convert this into this so that's the answer basically this this is the criteria for two right rectangular prisms to be similar to each other and that completes this very small set of problems um, I do suggest you to, to try actually to repeat the whole logic uh, just for yourself in, 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 in any case. Obviously the problems are on unizor.com uh, in the comments for this lecture. Uh, so thanks very much and good luck.